is okay. And evening all on YouTube. This is streaming to YouTube and to play chess. Uh, slightly an hour later than schedule. It was a bit tied up earlier. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so I thought we could uh, carry on from last week uh, to have a look at some more amazing games played by uh, Russian women's grandmaster Natalia Pogonina. Um, Pogonina. In fact, uh, so her team, by the way, won won the Russian uh, Women's Championship. So I think she's in a great mood right now, and I think they've won it before as well. And I've got a couple of games from that. But first, let's have a look at some of her, uh, her classic games. And the first game I like to show you goes back to Moscow, two thousand and eight. Uh, so this is actually the in the 2008 Russians women super final, and Natalia was playing Tatiana Shadrina. Um, by the way, I hope the board's okay. Just in case on YouTube, it should should be okay. I've got a preview here, and it seems okay. Uh, so, uh, so this first game played in Moscow, 2008. Natalia playing white. Her opponent was about the same FIDE rating. Natalia was 2474 at the time, and Shadrina, uh, Tatiana Shadrina was 2429, so about the same FIDE rating. E4 from Natalia, and her opponent played the Sicilian defence. C5, and now knight f3, e6, and now the open Sicilian d4. C takes, knight takes. And black now attacks the e pawn, and this is defended. And now d6, it's shaven England pawn formation here. Very flexible. White often has to watch out for d5 or e5 at some point. We get now an aggressive cares attack style system. Uh, the cares attack, in fact, is is what uh, chess base thinks of this uh, game. The cares attack after pawn cares cares g4. Very aggressive move, very aggressive response. Black now plays h6 to try and deprive g5 from white. Bishop e3. Black doesn't really want to play a move like e5. That would weaken d5, and the knight can actually go to f5 as well. So black stays flexible for the moment and just plays a6. And we see now Natalia playing h3. Useful, uh, this could be usefully used for bishop g2. In fact, and in fact, after b5, bishop g2 is played. So that's a kind of other aspect of this. It's not just for g5. This actual structure is good for Finchetto and the bishop here. e5 is now threatened. Bishop b7, a3, depriving black of b4. So both sides have deprived these key moves, which would have dislodged these knights. The central battle for central control is very interesting here. If this knight moves, then e4 is weaker. If this knight moves, then well, it's the battle over these two squares with these knights here on c3 and f6. They don't want to be moved away. So h6 looks like a3. Yeah, it's a bit symmetrical kind of strategy. Knight bd7, queen e2. This gives flexibility for castling queen side, of course. Rook c8. And it looks as though Castle and Queenside might actually suffer to an exchange sacrifice here. It looks as though this could be tempting fate. I'll put on uh, a Kabitza here. And let's just see. In the game, White played Bishop d2. And that does look like a cautious move, where the Queen would then be protecting e4 as well as the Knight and the Bishop. If we castle, I think this is just asking. Intuitively, I think it's asking for Rook takes e3. And the engine agrees. Rook takes c3. This is very good compensation for black. More than enough. I think black's now threatening horrible things, uh, including queen a5 as well as hitting the bishop. So they say taking here, this just looks bad news, this position. In fact, queen c8 is prompted. That might be really good. Black's doing very well. Tony wants to avoid that kind of disaster. So it's good to play bishop d2 here. No exchange sack. 
knight e5. However, this c4 square looks quite juicy to use and quite logical for black quite often on that semi open Sicilian c file. That is the outpost square, which can usually torture white in favorable circumstances. But Lasagna prompts the knight to use that square, f4. The knight goes to c4. And funny enough, here, Natalia castles queenside. There's no exchange check. This bishop is holding c3, so there's no knight takes a3 here. There's no tactic on c3. Queen b6 is played. And it looks as though, well, something has to be done about the knight. But it also looks as though b4 might be useful at some point. Bishop e1 is played, protecting the knight. And here you might think, well, b4, I think, runs into a problem. Let's have a quick look at b4. And this wasn't played. OK, white apparently does best actually to play knight a4. And after queen a5, white can actually consider playing bishop takes b4 here, protecting a3. If it takes b3, and apparently this is about equal. It's a bit of a sharp position for this bishop b4 resource to be being used here. But um, yeah, b4 it seems it's not deadly right now. It's good to, good to know. Knight d7 is played. So what is black up to? Well, maybe knight c5, and then it looks a bit more dangerous again for b4. Uh, depriving that a4 square from white that will take away the knight a4 resource we've just seen but now uh, an interesting move from the tanya with the king still in the center it looks quite thematic knight d5 to try and open up against the king and it's attacking the queen so black's intentions for any attack have to be put on hold in practical terms so it's a very good practical move if nothing else and in theory, actually, the engines quite like this move. It's changing its, its tune rapidly to being about equal. But I think the potential of this sacrifice is to give black, in human terms, a much more difficult position to play. Black took this, and this might not be best. The engine's actually suggesting, don't take it, don't take it, with queen d8, which looks terrible to retreat the queen to d8. But and in fact, after b3, you know, white's in the driving seat, like this, for example. Uh, this starts to look very interesting for white. Where can the knight go if it goes back to b6 here? This this looks okay. There's no, the attack from black has been uh, put on hold for a long time. So anyway, so after knight d5, black took. So we have a fun game emerging now after e takes d check immediately we see i think knight f5 is strong so bishop e7 i think i'm just going to check this though knight f5 the engine agrees knight f5 and it's difficult for black not to lose material if, if black castles then knight takes e7 and we can just i think just just take here is good enough so um okay so the black king moves to d8 so what has white got for the peace sacrifice uh, well, what has white got for the peace sacrifice rather? After bishop f2, there's a clear threat now of knight c6 check to win the queen. The queen moves out of the way with queen a5. And now knight c6 check is played anyway. White wants to open up these pieces, this bishop, this rook. This would be fantastic, increasing the mobility, the scope of white's pieces. It's taken uh, with if it, the king moves, we just take the queen. So it's taken. D takes this lovely rook now is there. Knight b8. Now rook h e1 threatens queen e8 check, and that's apparently a mate in five of taking hereafter. The king evacuates with king c7. Now a very, very strong move. This is the top engine move actually as well. Natalia finds in this position, well, one of the top engine moves, queen e4. Uh, so this queen e4 means actually queen d5 and not f7 is potentially on the cards now. Knight b6, holding the d5 square. Queen f5, that's another way to get to f7. f6, 
Queen e6, the queen is very persistent to, to use a check on f7. This is very, very dangerous, this check. Rook d8, and now it's used, queen f7 check. Okay, knight eight to d7, black is trying to give up material desperately, that's taken. This might not have been the most incisive move taking the knight immediately. The engine suggests actually there might be something a little bit stronger in rook e8. This is interesting as well. So after taking, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes d7, and black's falling to bits. The engines are very, very good in tactical positions, but uh, this move is very good as well. C takes, white is massively better. All we want to do in human chess is just to win. Playing the crushing move every single time might use a lot of energy as well. Might be totally impractical. This is just clearly much better for white. Look at these huge bishops. Look at these fantastic rooks. The queen. And um, white has clear threats still of rookie eight. So nothing's really been lost here at all. Rook takes d7. Queen e8 now is played. And this is now very, very difficult. In fact, there's a virtual pin here because of queen c6 check. If rook d8, I think there's queen c6 with a mate in two. Uh, so given that, the black king is actually just, actually a little bit stranded here, waiting for one of these rooks to join in the party. b4. Now white plays actually rook d3. And there's an idea of eventually taking this pawn to get the c3 square, which would be another route in for the opponent's king. d5. Now rook e6 is played, hitting the knight. Bishop c5, offering an entire rook to try and reduce white's attack. Natalia takes this, so exchange attack, bishop takes f2. King b1. As soon as b takes, there's rook c3 here. Let's just show this. If b takes, I believe rook takes c3. That might not be the most accurate, actually. No, 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 no. The engine suggests actually just taking time to play this first. Hit queen. So the queen moves. Then we've got uh, nasty stuff. Rook b3 if there. And if the queen goes to c5, then we've got rook c3, surely. Um, or just even maybe even stronger surely this is okay uh, okay so no black doesn't want to take on a3 black played bishop c5 trying to hold things together trying to keep control of this square but a takes b4 loosens black's control of c3 queen takes and now we see rook b3 and it's coordination of the rooks on b6 at the moment black's holding together at the moment Queen takes f4. Now queen e8 is played. And it looks as though there are numerous uh, threats here. One includes taking here for the check to be able to try and win this, if nothing else, in some variations. Queen d4. Bishop, oh, a very, very good move now is played. Black is threatening this, queen g1 and to take the bishop. The bishop moves f3. Um, and now, I don't think queen g1 does much. Black played bishop d6. And now we see this, um, we, we see rook e1. So what is going on here? Well, the bishop on f3 is actually supporting now rook d1. There's going to be pressure on d5, bishop e5, pointing at b2, trying to tie down the rook. Rook d1, so coordinating on d5, queen c5, queen g6. Bit of a fighting game, this one. Queen f5 now on the cards, or queen e8 still, with pressure on the black position. a5. which actually weakens the b5 square, and that entirely actually pounces on this weakness of the last move of queen d3. So the ideas of rook b5 now, or queen a6, king c6, queen a6, pinning the knight, 
bishop d4. Now, fantastic move. There's two pins here, one against the d-pawn, one against the knight. And we see c4. Black feels a bit helpless. The queen, can it really take? Is the bishop really holding b6? Let's just check this. If queen takes c4, then actually rook takes b6, bishop takes, we've got queen takes c4 check using this pin. So this is very serious now, c4. It seems to be overloading black. Uh, white is now crushing, apparently, according to the engine, black, with a plus eight or more advantage. Bishop f2 is played. C takes d5 check. King d6. Rook c3, finally. This makes an entrance on the c3 square. Queen b4. And now the final move, move 42, 44. Queen e2, and white now threatens rook c6 checkmate and queen e6 checkmate. And there's very little black can do, it seems, to defend this without incurring massive disadvantage. Black resigns here. If bishop c5, then, for example, queen e6 check, queen c6 check, and then we can just take on c5. So what did we learn from this game? Well, I found it quite frightening myself. Black's potential dangers of resources like b4, but her nerves are still here with bishop e4 against this stuff. So in this particular moment, it seems b4 is not quite working for black. So you need to be quite brave to play this kind of opening. Okay, it's fine that the king's still in the center, but with things like b4, you've got to be concerned. And it just seems in this in this particular position, b4, knight, a4, this, this stuff is working for, for white just with b3. It's amazing, but this works. And what's more amazing now is how, what really happened now is the black king being exposed. And this makes the position easier, more fun for white to play. Because what we see is, is the scope of all the pieces increasing and black's king, uh, in perilous danger in many variations having to run now it seems f7 was the initial target and black was just getting tied in knots eventually black had to use b4 for defensive purposes it seems on that c3 square later so uh, and giving up the exchange for very resourceful defense from black giving up the whole exchange to keep the dark square bishop but it proved not not to be totally uh, sufficient uh, still entirely made ways into the position this a5 weakened key squares uh, so in this position it was it was difficult uh, for black anyway there's a lot of pressure points here uh, but this made things a little bit easier for the queen to come to a6 and once these pins were set up then this move which was a real crusher here c4 was applied and then black really did fall apart. So a very interesting, entertaining attacking game there from Talia uh, back in 2008. Hope you enjoyed that one. Let's have a look at another. Now this game I'm going to show you is more recent, 2011 against Kosovo. And this was in the 18th European teams um, championship in Port Porto Caras in Greece, I believe, 2011. Um, let's temporarily turn off Kibitza. E4, and we have another Sicilian game. These are often great fun, these Sicilian games. Uh, so here we have what breed of Sicilian is this? It's the Sicilian Timonov. Timonov. Uh, so bishop e2, knight f6 after castles. Black has the option now to play bishop b4, which he, which um, is used. And white now plays knight a4, which you might think is a bit odd. And isn't it asking for something like b5? I'm not sure b5 is is working here. Uh, let's just add a kibitzer at this point, actually. Let's just check b5. I think, for me, knight b6 is almost interesting. That is that is a reasonable move. If taking 
knight takes e6 it's in the queen and here not not there, not there we take the queen here bishop f4 and this this is getting scary for black black would have to give up the queen apparently it's better for white so this is scary stuff to um to allow this knight b6 um let me just quickly look at this again knight takes e6 or there's actually now yeah knight takes e6 i think is is the strongest if if queen a5 taking here and if here this this looks as though there's great compensation for white black's king safety is like shot to bits uh, so this this looks pretty good so okay black doesn't want to get involved in that stuff so play bishop e7 and this gives a perk to white that the c pawn's free for a late Maroxy buy in c4 but you might think well the e pawn really the e pawn that's taken now okay so what's going on now knight takes b takes and it looks tempting to play something like knight b6 but actually c5 is played uh, still supporting knight b6 of course so there's positional compensation here there's a grip on the dark squares this bishop's kind of hemmed in at the moment so it looks like a positional pawn sack knight f6 knight b6 there's a huge grip on the position and this is celebrated now queen d4 look at this dark square grip black played e5 and we see queen c4 black castles rook fd1 tying that bishop down to d7 almost uh, but the knight's holding d7 as well but it still looks quite difficult uh, bishop b7 is played bishop g5 putting scrutiny now on d7 so taking in d7 is a problem rook hd8 protecting d7 sorry rook bd8 protecting d7 bishop f3 now black played knight d5 inviting the exchange of dark square bishops white didn't mind that queen b4 and again this bishop looks really bad there's a lockdown on d6 positional compensation is 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 evident knight f5 looks as though black's interested in knight d4 knight c4 and now knight d4 and it looks at first isn't this quite okay for black now natalia plays a positional exchange sacrifice rook takes d4 getting rid of black's best piece in the position e takes and now knight d6 look at this monstrous knight on d6 entrenched and this terrible bishop is there enough compensation well actually the engines the engine houdini believes so that white has the advantage after this exchange sack of, of a small advantage 0 0.28 uh so what can actually black do to get away from this grip on the position and there's another pawn about to fall so it'll be for a pawn as well or is it no hang on a sec three four five six three four five six seven it'll be on pawns but the grip will remain rook b8 queen takes d4 so we've got this uh, dynamically balanced position queen d8 bishop e2 and white can improve the pieces though by by putting the bishop here coordination of the knight and bishop on f7 queen f6 this looks a little bit desperate to get rid of the queens so structural damage now for black could black have done something else before we get into that committal variation it seems black was in difficulty anyway if bishop c8 b3 and white is looking forward to bishop c4 and tightening uh, the grip on the position so okay so queen f6 was a kind of trying to free the game a bit it's taken and now bishop c4 there's still a huge grip on the position bishop c8 okay the b pawns attack that's just moved a5 rook e1 now and it looks as though rook e7 is really dangerous or even rook e3 to swing across like this because then f7 is a vulnerable point black tries to get some counterplay going 
and it's very difficult here with this terrible bishop on c8 a4 is played this is just ignored if it's taken well there's no point really it will give black something maybe with rook a8 maybe that's a little bit easier for black to play maybe rook a5 don't want to get involved in this to give black any counterplay Natalia no she just plays rook e3 which introduces things like rook g3 check now to get the king away from the protection of f7 h6 and now a very calm move h3 just securing the back row a bit seeing what black's doing a takes a takes now rook a8 so with the back row not a problem the king's got h2 we see rook e7 now looking at f7 to win a pawn for the exchange check king h2 and black is helpless actually on f7 this is a magnificent knight to have installed there on d6 bishop a6 is played and now we have bishop takes f7 check and this is bad news for black king h8 and now white has a fantastic attack with bishop g6 as well as positional trump cards threatening things like check here with mate in six or knight f5 with mate in four after rook a3 knight f5 it's a forced mate because this check has got 97 behind it there's little black can do here against this forced mate in two nothing in fact nothing can be done about it it seems black tries bishop d3 but now rook at h7 check and black resigned if king g8 there's just 97 there's no other defense here this is a mate in two according to the engines uh, so knight f5 is a mate in two so this game has an idea which started from the opening of this positional advantage in this time off showing the dark squares are a bit vulnerable with all these pawns on light squares you'd think is there a dark square complex issue especially d6 what a wonderful thing to get a knight on d6 so how did this happen again it was a pawn sack marking out d6 a knight going to b6 to start off with and then this d6 entrenchment starts getting rid of the the dark square bishops really helped and then queen before the knight's ready to come in there and it comes in there to that beautiful square after the exchange sack so it's not even for a pawn at this stage but the latent uh, pressure in this position for the knight it doesn't just look pretty it's doing something functional it's hitting f7 just need the bishop to join in on f7 and real compensation is going to be uh, extracted as the game showed as long as black doesn't generate any um, counterplay of significance f7 is now a uh, terrible liability um, the engine suggests actually um, maybe a slightly better path king g7 as a defense this, this made it a little bit murkier uh, this this idea this is an engine defense but even even this line white's a bit better so maybe black didn't put in uh, the best resistance so this in particular wasn't too hot apparently uh, so bishop takes f7 and then we have this um, this forced mate now so quite a nice game there positional uh, exchange sacrifice getting a knight to d6 then going for the king after so now let's go to uh, a game in 2012 so in 2012 Natalia was playing black this is an amazing game which I think I've this is a sort of a revision game it's been shown on the channel the YouTube channel at some point let's have a look at it again I think it was um, 
very impressive with the black pieces uh, against the higher rated opponent at the time at 2530 uh, Tatiana Kosensva sorry about the pronunciation or lack of so e4 from Tatiana and Natalia playing black played um, an archangelist type system this early bishop c5 it looks as though black's got active pieces but uh, c3 now Tyler just castled d4 and now bishop b6 so a prepared idea um, is it good to take the pawn I don't I wouldn't believe so in live book it's not mentioned to take the pawn actually I mean that's terrible or is it uh, white just um, White just played bishop e3 here. I think this is one of the top theoretical moves. This is a bishop g5, but bishop e3 was played. Bishop e3. So prepared line, solid play from black. d6, knight b2, h6, h3. And then rook e8. So black seems to have a pleasant enough position. Encouraging white to close the position in the center with d5. In fact, d5 is played and that's that's the theoretical move as well usually knight e7 doesn't matter so much about double pawns I think that's taken bishop c2 knight g6 black has nice dark square control at the moment uh, it's about equal the engine suggests this position here is about equal knight d7 is played and this actually potentially frees the f pawn one day which could hit white center quite hard bishop f1 rook c8 for the moment trying to maybe discourage c4 potentially a4 this is taken rook takes now looking a6 b5 rook a3 and now again trying to discourage maybe c4 knight b6 so trying to lock down white's queen side g3 and now rook f8 as though f5 trying to blow up white center with f5 it looks uh, like a thematic idea here bishop d3 and now queen d7 looking at the h pawn this is protected knight e7 looking at f5 this will help undermine the pawn chain so it seems here that black is doing quite comfortably knight h4 designed against f5 now we see knight a4 looking at b2 that's protected and now f5 is played anyway despite white seemingly trying to prevent it trying to undermine this pawn chain and also the kings behind this pawn chain this bishop will be quite dangerous on this diagonal knight takes f5 knight takes e takes bishop takes d5 so black also has central pawn mobility potentially c4 I mean the bishop was attacking the rook an interesting little move instead of moving the bishop back a much stronger move is played knight c5 hitting this one in return this drops back and then this bishop drops back to b7 so what has black achieved well if black can get this f file that would be fantastic white protects that f pawn and now b4 which uh is nice for this knight sitting pretty controlling this key central square f3 trying to block this bishop and now a fantastic idea is played in this position to try and rip open black's pieces to coordinate vocally on f3 Natalia plays a line ripping pawn sacrifice g6 offering a pawn just to rip open this f file f takes queen e6 white's pieces are quite passive here compared to blacks look at this black's pieces coordinating b3 queen takes g6 and horrible things are starting to be threatened now from black like just getting maybe into the dark squares um, knight e4 this is just taken now leaving potentially a better knight versus bishop f takes but now also the rooks can easily coordinate to double 
and use this F file. There's some potential entry points here along this F file. Bishop G2, Rook C F8. Beautiful coordinated pieces. Rook D2, King G7 now is played. So trying to uh, strengthen the position first before doing anything, seeing what White's doing. Is White almost in the Zugzwang because the, the Knight's hitting B3, the Queen's tied down here. There's this entry point here. So what is White doing? Rook E3. Rook E6 is played. For a moment, seeing what White's doing, Queen E1. So this looks as though it's defending things. Queen G5. Rook G3. A5. Potentially there's also a dangerous pass pawn here on the cards. Queen D1. Queen G6. Looking at E4. White counterattacks here. Instead of trying to defend E4. Rook A2. Looking at A5. Now we see Rook E F6 wanting to maybe get on to pin this bishop, giving up the A5 pawn. Rook F2 pinning the bishop, so immediately threatening things like Knight takes E4. Check, King drops back, King G1. Now Queen G5, and this is quite dangerous now. Offering d6, so what's the entire up to? After queen takes d6, knight takes e4 is played. Hitting these guys. What is going on here? Well, if bishop takes e4, then queen c1 check is a mate in two. Um, because this rook's looking at h2, the king hasn't got that. Because the bishop here meant king h2 was possible. So the bishop cannot leave this position because of this vicious queen c1. So queen, now black gets desperate with queen takes f8 check, giving up the queen. Getting a rook and a knight seems initially maybe it's a good idea. Queen f4 hits everything. Rook f3. And is this bad news, this rook f3? Not really. Queen c1 check. Queen d2 check. And now in this position, after those two checks, queen e2. Pardon me, queen e2. <laughs> King g3. What's happened to my score sheet? Let's try and get it back. Queen e1 check. And here, if king g2, then actually queen takes e4, pins the rook. There's no taking here. So the king actually went to h2. And this looks unfortunate, like a loose piece possibility. And it is. Because after rook takes f3, we've got this loose piece check to win the rook. Is white escaping with the check here? Well, not really, because now a fantastic move. Rook f8 drags and drops the rook to another vulnerable location. And so we'll have a basic double attack after taking king g7. White is losing material. And is forced to resign here. This is just too much. It was a very, very important game against a higher rated opponent. I think a great bit of opening preparation. Very complex game using the F file, initial pawn sacrifice. Um, so very dynamically played, aggressive. And um, yeah, getting a rook on the seventh is often just lethal. Here it was no different. Uh, once this rook was installed there, some dynamic possibilities emerging. The knight takes e4. Okay. A great game. Now, let's go into 
just a very recent games in the very recently finished Russian Russian team championship women's Russian team championship played in Russia and this is just from April 7th believe it or not this game 2014 Natalia playing white against Ekaterina Kovlasvenkia um, so d4 from Natalia and we saw knight, knight f6 c4 e6 so Natalia's opening repertoire is quite wide using d4 as well as e4 <clears throat> knight f3 d5 Catalan territory Tarash type territory as well now c takes d4 bishop g2 check bishop takes d2 queen takes e takes and there's a classic Tarash strategy coming up uh, because now after knight c6 this position Natalia now took on c6 and often the idea is a dark square strategy especially c5 c5 square to blockade that is often the priority now knight a4 looking at c5 getting a grip on the dark squares will reduce the mobility of these pawns knight c5 rook a b8 b3 trying to re reduce black's counterplay queen e3 pinning the bishop keeping knight on c5 black here played knight g4 and the queen just shifted now to d4 so there's a nice grip on the position this is an ideal setup for playing against this structure knight a6 h6 trying to evict the queen with knight f5 now the tire hits the center with e4 depriving that knight of f5 black took and now there's fractured pawns and this knight is now given up actually knight takes e6 just to leave this other advantage of the fractured pawns not minding an exchange of queens black though avoided that here and okay so black played rook e5 uh, queen a4 hitting the pawns and one pawn is about to drop off I think let's add a, a kibitza here if I can I think this is an advantage now for white yes it is c5 one pawn is dropping off so the bishop's slightly better than the knight as well knight f5 but the knight tries to make itself felt but immediately is pinned g6 queen b7 rook d8 and now this this is a free a pawn to run a4 rook d3 is played and now b4 c takes queen takes so white still got this dangerous pass pawn and a nasty pin king g7 now entirely with that queen on b4 plays rook fe1 trying to get rid of black's counterplay getting rid of these pieces rook takes rook takes and this is getting worse now for black uh, possibly best is queen f6 or queen d5 I think black blundered with rook b3 this is increasing white's advantage slightly after bishop takes f5 black's best is just a, the miserable ending with rook takes b4 but black didn't do this 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 ending is a bit miserable um, possibly it is it is winning for white though still as well but uh, black so black avoided that with queen d5 which is just a piece down now after bishop e4 though this is much much quicker way to, to win the game with black's continuation bishop e4 and black resigned uh, here okay so I hope you got something out of these these interesting games this is a more recent one the first three were like classics 
and this is a more recent one to help uh, Tanya win her the team championship actually her team actually won the Russian team championship so congratulations there to Natalia um, okay so I uh, hope you enjoyed these games and um, maybe see you uh, next week uh, so good luck in your chess and uh, see you next week thanks very much